a substantial points lead by the time uh, he leaves here. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're Ryan Dungey, uh, you got to thank your teammate here, Metcalf, for at least taking a few points potentially away from Filippoto, but he's got to keep that bike upright. Obviously very deceiving how slippery this track is in spots. Yeah, and, and if you notice in the sections where it gets really wet, that's where it's really starting to rut up. But what I mean by rut is rather than there being a line that's a, you know, a foot or 18 inches wide of sand, like a fluffy sand turn, when you get where it's really wet, there'll be a rut that is literally only as wide as the rear tire, and the tire cuts in. Now, where it gets even more difficult, Jason, is where you get a wet section where it's just water all the way across because there's actually ruts zigzagging under that, but you can't see that. Dumbest Stuff on Wheels coming up. This is uh, Jeff Emick's favorite new show, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Dumbest Stuff on Wheels coming up uh, Wednesday, 8 uh, Pacific, or 8 Eastern and 5 Pacific on Wednesday. Dumbest Stuff on Wheels, it's an all-new episode. It's the downright outrageous situations, crashes, mishaps, craziest stuff you've ever seen caught on tape. So don't miss more painful lessons the hard way on an all-new Dumbest Stuff on Wheels. Yeah, see, and what they do a good job with on that show is they mix it up, you know, between sport bike riders and the kids on skateboards and cars and rednecks and all kinds of cool stuff going on. I hate to insult these guys, but we might see some highlights from that show in this race. This track is so treacherous. These boys are just trying to do their best to keep the bikes upright and get to the finish. I believe that's got to be Ryan Villapoto's goal right now in, in uh, fourth. Here is Weimer in fifth. Michael Lessie sixth, Les Smith seventh. Jacob Morris in eighth, Marshall and uh, Dowd rounding out the top ten. Want to apologize for any technical difficulties we have. Of course, we are uh, near the eye of the hurricane, and we're not talking Bob Hanna in motocross terms. It's Hurricane <laughs> Irene here in the northeast at Southwick, just a few miles north of uh, Hartford, Massachusetts, and obviously the weather is uh, really having an impact on our show today and, of course, on the riders. Here is Alessi on the Red Bull KTM. And then Les Smith, who is the replacement rider for Davey Millsap, who's out with a knee injury on the Muscle Milk Toyota Yamaha team, will come through next on the 44. So yeah. Smith is happy. Yeah, and it, yeah, he's putting in a great ride. And you see Alessi, look how rutted the track is getting. And uh, what I've noticed is that the bikes are really, the back of the bikes are really moving around mm -hmm. left to right, especially when they get in those wet sections. And that's what I was talking about how you catch those ruts and certain things that maybe it looks like the track is this way, but then as the riders go over it, underneath it's got an edge that completely uh, squirrels you out. Jacob Morrison here in the uh, number uh, eight spot, and this track is known for this. Southwick is a type of track that breeds strange things. Not only the bike problems for uh, for uh, Dungey, got Robbie Marshall coming through here. You see a lot of privateers, a lot of guys who have ridden laps of this track put in great rides, and that's exactly what's happening. You got Morrison, who's from Wareham, Massachusetts. He's in seventh. You got Marshall, who's from Massachusetts as well. He's in the top ten. So as usual, Southwick, and here's their fave from Chicopee, oh, Mass, yeah. to 16 at John Dowd. So you're looking at three Massachusetts riders in the top ten right now. Yeah. Dowd is in ten, Marshall ninth, Morrison eighth. And, and you know what's ironic about this situation is, is these guys have probably raised a local, you know, you know, like NSEC, yeah. NESC, NESC yeah. race here uh, on a local level, you know, maybe a big money, a, you know, a purse race. Shane Sewell uh, just put the move situation. on Dowd, though. I want to give a shout out to the kid from Indiana. But yeah, I know what you're saying. These guys have raced local races, and I'm sure they've raced them in the rain before. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Maybe even the snow up here, you know, in the wintertime. If you ever looked at the NESC schedule, it was like 100 events a year. So yeah, these guys have experience. But Sewell doing a great job here. Both the brothers, Shane and Travis Sewell, out here today. And there is Shane getting around Dowd. Now, here's what's on the line for Dowd. He's trying to hold on to that national number 16. The rule is he has to score 25 points in this series every year to keep his national career number. He needs to basically finish 10th in the two motos today to secure 25 points. He is in 11th right now. And you know what? I, I believe on my my fantasy league on AllySports.com that yep. I have Travis Sewell ah. as part of my fantasy team. And it's Shane here running 11th this That's what moto. you meant. Ah. You meant Shane. You meant Shane. So he's trying to put the pressure on Marshall, who is in ninth, Morrison in eighth. So the local folks who have decided to stick around in the tough weather I've got some people to cheer for and some great things to cheer about. Stay with us. Hey, 
night of drama here at Southwick, and more has unfolded. Here is Chad Reed headed back to the pits with his mechanic, Lars. Not sure what has happened there to the 22. That makes two DNFs for Chad Reed. When was the last time that he ever, yeah. ever had a situation like that? He, he, he throughout his whole career, uh, as a rider and even the equipment that he's been on, uh, I mean, he's been Mr. Consistent. Very few uh, mechanical problems, very few races where he actually crashed out, even though he did crash out of the overall here um, a couple years ago, That's the true. year that he won the title. So Southwick, in general, has just not been kind to Chad Reed. Well, hasn't been kind to anybody. Justin Barsha, who is leading this moto right now, should be in position to win the overall for the afternoon if you count both motos. He was running third in the first moto earlier today, but then he ran into mechanical problems and his bike quit, so instead he finished out of the points. So this kid is looking at potentially a moto victory, but not an overall. But I'll tell you Which, what, if you're Justin Barsha, you'd be pretty pumped to win a moto anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that any rider uh, has, has won his opening uh, one this early. When on a 450? A 450? Well, mid-season, certainly, I would think. Uh, yeah. You know, Ryan Villapoto won, went 1-1 one, one in his first 450 race, but that was at the beginning of the year when he had a whole year of uh, testing to get ready. But uh, I'm telling you, it's a lot different uh, for Barsha. He basically just jumped on this bike about three weeks ago. And what's interesting, he's subbing for the injured Trey Kennard. That is Trey Kennard's bike through and through. Barsha has not changed a single thing on it since Trey rode it. Uh, Aaron, what do you have on the 17? Well, guys, when I spoke to Dan Bentley, the engine development guy from uh, Factory Honda, he had said that they found a mechanical failure. They weren't exactly sure what it was, but they believe it was an, an electrical gremlin is what they had called it. But they temporarily have fixed the problem. They're going to take the bike back to Torrance, and they're going to diagnose it further there. Wow, an electrical electrical gremlin. It, it, it you know. That's it was the, the bad thing. gremlin. Obviously, you know, there's the nice one, the cuddly one. Gizmo? Yeah, Gizmo is the good one. The Gizmo didn't show up today. Hey, obviously. Well, okay, I'm not going to comment anymore because that's just showing how old we are. Let's talk about Barsha, who has no idea what movie we're talking about because he is, uh, what, I think 19 years old, one of the youngest riders in this 450 division, and only jumped up to this bike at our previous race at Unadilla. Has had a rough go of it in the 250 class this summer. So basically, out of the championship picture there, Honda needed a rider for their injured 450 uh, crew. It's like a new lease on life for this kid. Well, and that's, um, you know, well, let's uh, take a look at the uh, progressive hole shot, and uh, I'll finish my comment, because uh, on the 250 this year, Barsha by far had the most hole shots, seven. Oh, yeah. yep. The next closest was, uh, was another rider with two. So he's really good off the start. And that's what he's brought to this Honda team, is being able to put this Honda 450 up front off of the start, just like he's done here in this moto, and put him in a, in a position to win. Yeah, and Chad Reed, with a uh, bad start, he ends up going down and he take us through this, Jeff. Here's your progressive hole shot, and uh, Dungey would have started way to the left uh, on this gate. You see another rider stalled out, and as they funnel in this really tight vortex, Barsha, by the way, had the bad Barsha gate pick. Barsha was way on the outside because he had a bad pick with the DNF, and then uh, he comes flying around. And there's Chad Reed in the uh, foreground there, down on the ground. So well, the one thing we figured is if you had a bad gate pick here, there was no way you'd get a good start. Reed had the bad gate pick because he had a bad first moto. He went down. Dungeon didn't even get to the gate, but Barsha did the impossible. Pulled a start from the outside. That's the kind of starts this kid has gotten this year. He has been lightning out of the gate, and he might just carry it all the way to a moto win here on a rainy day at Southwick. Freddie. Let's check in here on Ryan Dungey. He is your defending series champion. He's the man that won our first race earlier today. But this second race has been a complete disaster of no fault of his own, though. They had to change motors between races. They couldn't get the thing going, and the gate dropped, and the race started without him. He finally got the bike going, luckily, before the leader had completed the first lap. You're able to get into the race as long as the leader has not completed lap one. They got the bike down to the line. Dungey started about, what, three quarters of a lap after the rest of the field, and he has now worked his way up to 21st place and that is amazing because if you're into the top 20 you're going to score points 
And the way this series has gone, every point's going to count. I know he's going to take a huge hit considering the leader, Villapoto, is in fourth right now. And Dungey's going to lose a lot of points to him, but as Chattery always said, you got to be in it to win it. And every point Dungey counts is going to keep him in it. Yeah, and, and that's the point here. I mean, the message is to keep trying. Certain things are, are out of your control. Uh, for Ryan Dungey, this bike issue is out of his control, so he needs to do the best that he can do. And it started at such a disadvantage in this moto, and it's going to be so frustrating. You know, I mean, it's just heartbreaking to be out there trying to do this, and he knows the implications of, of this bad moto. But after this moto is over, we still have two more races, four more motos, you know, tons of racing. And I mean, in motocross, you just never know. I mean, you go back yep. to the to the 250 championship last year between Porcel and um, uh, Trey Kennard. Uh, just, you know, that whole thing went back and forth. And just when you thought that Porcel had it, he goes down, doesn't even finish either moto. Kennard takes the championship, you know, so. Let's uh, go down it. to Aaron, who has a report on one of those Massachusetts riders we saw who was running up front earlier today. Aaron? That's right. The uh, Massachusetts native, Robbie Marshall, is sitting here in the mechanics area being attended to by his mechanics and also the Asterix medical team. He has got so much sand in his eyes from losing his goggles out there. He literally could not see anymore. It was in a lot of pain when he came in. His whole body was tremoring. They are dousing him with water, trying to rinse all the sand out at this moment. Yeah, and he was running in the top 10. Meanwhile, if you uh, watch the action right now, you're going to think to yourself, Dungey is battling for the lead. Because check this out. Here comes your leader, Barsha, and he's actually closing in on uh, the top 20. Lap of those guys, and that would mean he's going to close in on Dungey. Here's the keys to the race, by the way. Brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com. Jeff, what do you need to do here at Southwick to go fast? Well, uh, Barsha somehow, with that bad gate pick, uh, managed to get a good start. He certainly is keeping his momentum going, and uh, he's he's got a great technique right now, right? And keeping uh, clear vision. I mean, we just seen Robbie Marshall having problems, and and it's not like a manufacturer thing. I mean, the conditions are so bad and so difficult that if you can be out front like Dun or like Barsha is right now, yeah. you you're not going to get as much roost on your goggles because you're not battling with the guy, except for the lap riders. And uh, most of the time, you're going to go past those guys at a pretty good click anyway. And uh, so you keep your goggles clear. And if you can keep your goggles on the whole moto, that's a huge advantage over the rider that has to take his goggles off because of uh, the tear off and the roll off system fails. So Marsha continues to lead over great and great ride for him. Uh, he is in second on uh, the Muscle Moto Toyota Yamaha, Metcalf third, Villapoto trying to ride consistent in fourth, but got a rider down here in a precarious position. Or, this is uh, right at the finish line. Yeah. And luckily the rider is off the track, but the rider is going to watch the bike. There is Weimer going by on the number uh, in the number five spot. Then it's Alessi Smith. Dowd has climbed up to eighth. Sewell and Chisholm, who's back in action today after some injuries. Riding out the top 10 on one of the wildest days we've seen on a motocross track in quite some time. Justin Barsha continues to lead. I don't even know what story we should cover first here. Round 10 of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. Justin Barsha is your leader in this moto. But in motocross, you have to be consistent in two races in one afternoon to win the overall for the day. The bad news for Barsha, he was running third in our first moto until his bike broke. So he's going to go did not finish and first for his two scores today. Yeah, which, so. is, which is amazing because uh, his gate pick with the DNF in Moto 1 was horrible, but he absolutely hammered the throttle off that Honda, off the start, and uh, was inside of the top five, which is just an amazing gate. And trouble here for the 800 of Mike Alessi, Jeff. Take us through what happened to Alessi, who was running uh, in sixth place. Oh. Alessi coming down through, uh, you can see the ruts just coming down through here everywhere. and. I mean, some of them go back and forth, and uh, they just ate him up. Now, Mike's a pretty good mud rider, so for him to make a, a big mistake, you also notice that he didn't have his goggles on. Uh, that definitely attributed to uh, his lack of vision and lack of judgment there. So, okay, Barsha might win this second moto, but he had a bad moto one. So scratch him from contention for the so, overall. Our so first what's moto the story winner, for the let's overall? Let's explain this. Our first moto winner, Ryan Dungey, couldn't get his bike going in moto two. He's coming through traffic. Now he's in 13th. So scratch Dungey from a chance to win the overall today with a first and a 13th. The man who stands to possibly win the overall right now is Brett Metcalf, third in Moto One. He has just made the pass on Justin Brayton to take over second. If he goes 3 2, 
he should edge Ryan Villapoto, who is looking at a second in Moto1 and a fourth in this Moto2. There's Brayton, the third place rider on the number 10. Brett Metcalf could be in position.